So of course, getting good at anything requires um, quite a bit of practice. So here are some examples that you can use to practice solving absolute value equations. There are at least three tricky ones out of five, so I guess that should have been done a little bit better. But in any case, if you are constantly feeling like something weird is happening, it's because there is something weird happening. In fact, all of them have something a little weird about them, I think. So go ahead and try to work these and then come back and see if either your answers are right or if you still need help if you get stuck on something. So assuming that you've done that, now let's take a look at the first one. So we have that the absolute value of x is equal to 0. And of course, this is our first trick problem. So if we know that the absolute value of x is equal to 0, we can really go literally and say that either x is equal to 0 or x is equal to, we might try to say, negative 0. But that really doesn't have any meaning. So actually, the only solution for this problem is x equals 0. The only thing I can take the absolute value of and get 0 is 0 itself. So that was fun and fast. Now this problem is only tricky because you have to remember to isolate the absolute value. So we want to get the absolute value term by itself. So my first step is going to be to subtract 25 from both sides. So I have 2 times the absolute value of x is equal to negative 2. Now if I want to get the x absolute value by itself, I'm going to have to subtract 2 from both, or sorry, divide both sides by 2, leaving me with this. And oh, this is a terrible problem to give you, I'm sorry. Absolute value of x is equal to negative 1. Can't solve it. Because remember, the absolute value of anything has to be positive, so I can't get the absolute value of something and get a negative number. So after you do all that work, you eventually find that there's no solution. All kinds of excitement. This one might actually be like a normal problem. Let's see. The absolute value sign is already isolated, so I'm in good shape to go ahead and get started with splitting it apart. 3x plus 1 over 2 is equal to 7, or 3x plus 1 over 2 is equal to negative 7. Now I want to get rid of that fraction, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. I'll do it on the other one as well. So we'll get 3x plus 1 is equal to 14 or 3x plus 1 is equal to negative 14. Keep working through it. Plug and chug. Oops. Um. Like that. Oh, that's just beautiful. Except I'm an idiot. Sorry, I guess I've been doing this too long. Um, is that better? <laughs> no negative sign. I don't know where the negative sign came from. This is what you get for free videos. Um, negative 5, 13 over 3. Good chunk. Fantastic. This one? Hopefully, you look at it immediately say an absolute value can't be equal to a negative. So there's no solution. Don't get those problems wrong because they're like two and a half second problems and it takes way, way longer to find the wrong answer than it does to find the right one. This one's a little weird. We just haven't done an example like this. Basically, it's saying the absolute value of one is equal to the absolute value of the other. It sounds silly. On problems like this, you can actually pretend that one of the absolute value signs doesn't exist. Um, so we can say that it's either equal to the positive 5x minus 8, or it's equal to the negative 5x minus 8. So you still treat it the same way. It's either equal to the thing inside, or it's equal to the negative of the thing inside. So what obviously makes this a little bit more interesting is the fact that you have to distribute that negative across. To get 3x plus 2 is equal to negative 5x plus 8. And now you have to solve these for x. So like I said, I did, I did warn you that these were all going to be a little tricky. Minus 10. Come on, girl. Minus 5x. Minus 5x. Minus 2x. Minus 10. Divided by negative 2. Divided by negative 2. Ka-chonk. And then over here, 
Let's keep doing kind of the same thing, I guess. That would be plus six. Um, six eighths or three fourths. So x is equal to three fourths or five. And those are those problems.